Hello and welcome to Tianjin. This is the Wudadao area of Tianjin, uh, the five big avenues. And uh, it's a part of what once was the British concession in Tianjin. Um, it's full of old uh, late 1800s, early 1900 uh, colonial buildings. It's quite an interesting part of town. So you've seen the movie Chariots of Fire, right? One of the two guys uh, that that movie is about, this guy called Eric Liddell, um, a Scottish athlete and missionary, he used to live there. So Eric Liddell was born here in 1902, and then went back to Scotland, did his education, all that kind of stuff. And uh, famously in the movie, he was an athlete. He actually got capped several times for the Scotland uh, national rugby team but most famously he was uh, an athlete and he went into the uh, 1924 Olympic Games in Paris and won a gold medal in the 400 meters famously his best event was 100 meters and he didn't do it because the final was on a Sunday and he was a devout Christian and didn't believe that he should be competing on on Sundays so um, still nevertheless won a 400 metre gold medal. So immediately after winning Olympic gold 100 years ago, he came back to Tianjin. Well, a year later, 1925, he moved back to Tianjin um, to continue his missionary work and stayed here in China for the, for the rest of his life. He died here actually in 1945 during the Japanese occupation uh, in World War II. He was put into a prison camp um, and unfortunately quite sadly died. There's quite a lot of amazing stories of him. Uh, other people who were in their camp, survivors, who talked about him. He was very much the centre of everything, you know. Um, quite an amazing person. But there you are, who knew? That Scottish athlete from Chari Sophia. Big connection to this city. So if you're wondering what I'm walking around, this is uh, Minyuan Plaza in the middle of the Wudadao area. But it's on the site of what was a stadium designed by Eric Liddell, or with help from Eric Liddell, based on Stamford Bridge, apparently the Chelsea ground. It only got knocked down in 2012, and that's made this quite nice plaza. Still got a running track. Maybe that's a little nod to Eric Liddell. Oh, I'm desperate for a coffee. There's a cafe up. <laughs> There's a cafe over on the road. It's cold. You can see that. Oh, normal, normal cafe. Name's not really selling me. But you know what? This whole area is full of nice, quite cute little cafes. Let's try the normal cafe. It was pretty normal. It was all right. Never been to Tianjin before. It's the first time. It's got quite a nice feel, this part of town. Um, if you've been to Shanghai, the French concession in Shanghai is quite a famous place. You know, tree-lined streets and cafe culture and stuff. Similar here, it's quite nice. This building is St. Joseph's Church in uh, central Tianjin. It's built by the French. The French built church in uh, 1917. It's the biggest church in Tianjin. Let's try and have a little sneak peek inside. The cathedral sits in what was once the French concession and is a famous landmark in Tianjin. Inside was lovely, with typical high vaulted ceilings and lovely hues from the stained glass windows. Definitely worth a look if you're visiting the city. Oh my god, what is this? Why am I here? What am I doing? The China House or Porcelain House is a former French colonial building turned into this thing 
Hundreds of millions of porcelain pieces decorate the building, which apparently cost the designer and owner a couple of billion renminbi to construct. The vases and other decorations date from various periods in Chinese history and cover every inch of the building. Pretty unusual and a bit crap, but nevertheless, if you've got some time to kill in Tianjin, it's worth a look. Unique is probably the best word. One of the weirdest places I've ever been in my life. Anyway, walking past the most of a look in. What a bizarre place. Anyway, let's keep moving. That was a, <laughs> a mild distraction. So we're just going to have a walk down a street called uh, Jefang Beilu. Uh, it's particularly known for its European architecture. It was also part of the, uh, the old British concession. Let's go. I keep mentioning the word concession, the British concession. Um, what was this all about? Well, colonialism is what it was all about. So from about the mid 1800s, um, foreign powers, beginning with the British, of course, um, started to intervene more and more into China to open up trade ports uh, and things like that. So to open up trade, um, beginning with the British, you know, there was a series of wars with the various Western uh, empires and also Japan um, in which they basically forced the hand of the Qing government to give them what they wanted. These wars obviously include things like both the first and second opium wars, the Sino-French war, the Sino-Japanese war, you know. And it was essentially foreign powers just coming here and kind of taking advantage of what was at that time a pretty weak government in China. Uh, run, run by the the last empire, the last emperors of the uh, of the dynasty, waging war and then basically forcing them to sign treaties, which gave them uh, gave these foreign powers land and area in various places in Chinese cities. Now in China, these treaties are called the Unequal Treaties, which is a very, very, very apt name because that is what they were. Essentially, it was uh, foreign powers, you know, coming and doing what they wanted in another country. Um, then fighting a war, saying, well, okay, give us this, you can't do this anymore, and so on and so forth. And um, the Qing government essentially capitulating and giving them what they wanted. So the UK had seven concessions in various places in China, in Guangdong, famously in Shanghai here in Tianjin and uh, this city was really carved up by by the foreign powers the old city of Tianjin which is an old wall city is up the river a little bit that way um, there's not much old stuff there unfortunately but it's still called the old town this whole area where I've been walking around today where I am right now right on this very frozen river was all foreign concessions so most of the city of Tianjin today the majority of it was owned by the UK, France, Russia, Japan, Italy. Everyone just had a piece of it. Um, it was Tianjin was one of the locations that you know they demanded because just down the river this way you go straight to the sea, not far from the sea here, and uh, it also connects to the Grand Canal, just about maybe two kilometres up the river that way, uh, which goes straight to Beijing. So obviously it was well hooked up to transport whatever they were transporting. Opium, probably. Um, it's pretty horrible, you know, it's a, it's a crazy part of British and European colonial history and Japanese, of course. Um, and it's something that I think a lot of people don't know much about. But that's how it was, you know, they, they came here, they built cities. One, I suppose the one thing that you could say is relatively nice about it is because they built big European style brick and stone buildings. They're, um, they're still here, you know, and they are quite beautiful. If you go to Shanghai, uh, the Bund, very famous um, riverside part of Shanghai, it is, it is quite spectacular and somehow mixed with these huge modern skyscrapers 
it, uh, it is quite an interesting part to look around. Well, look at these maniacs. I'm sure the ice is thick, but if you do go through in the middle of that river, you're kind of screwed, aren't you? So these foreign concessions, they had their own laws, their own schools, their own prisons, their own police forces, sometimes even a standing army. Um, just completely insane, you know? When you, when you think about it. And, and made places, it did make places very wealthy. Not just the Europeans who lived here, but um, a lot of Chinese people. Most, most of the people who actually lived in the concessions were actually Chinese. Um, and a lot of people got very, very rich from this, uh, this opening up of trade. Tianjin today is one of the four municipalities in, in China, along with Beijing, Shanghai, and Chongqing. It's a very wealthy city, uh, super highly developed. It's an interesting place, you know, it's not my normal kind of place because there's not a lot of actual old stuff here for me to explore. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it, it is nice to be here. Yeah. So the British concession was the first one here. Uh, started in 1860 after the treaties of Tianjin in 1858 and then the convention of Peking in 1860 which I mentioned in another video that was just after the British had burnt down the old summer palace and then forced them to give them this huge chunk of Tianjin as well. Um, it was in World War II that the, the Japanese actually occupied the British uh, concession and then following, you know, after the outcome of World War II, that's when all of these concessions were essentially ended, handed back, with the exception of a few places, Macau, Hong Kong, etc. Um, Hong Kong, of course, was also a concession. It's very much a flying visit to Tianjin, this. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon, heading south to smaller and weirder places. So this was the Astor Hotel, which as you can see by the number there, was built in 1863. So it's probably one of the oldest of all the buildings in the concession. The concession only, you know, began in 1860. Okay, we're gonna wrap this one up here. Uh, it's been an interesting couple of days. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I'd come back to Tianjin, but if someone's got any recommendations, things I missed, I'm all ears. This here is the Haiho River, which is, as you can see, very frozen and it branches off here this way and this is the start of the southern canal which goes all the way to the city of Linqing in Shandong province and that is our direction right until next time see you later all the best bye bye